I can instantly sort of turn on whenever I see a Stanford basketball game and I feel like I'm kind of out there with the girls, whatever, no matter how old I am, um, I feel as though I'm still part of it and I, it really bubbles up that feeling of how great it was to be a part of a great team. I do feel that sisterhood, I feel that connection, I cheer for their successes outside of basketball, within basketball. Um, my, my kids are completely conditioned to cheer for anyone who played for Stanford. And it's, it's really, I don't have any sisters. I have two older brothers and my teammates that I had when I was at Stanford, they are my sisters. They're the people that I would call on on those tough days that I know would do anything for me at any moment. I think some places you stand out as an athlete especially if you're a part of a very successful team, like the women's basketball team at Stanford. But I think there, for me, it was like, over here is this famous concert pianist, and on the other side is this kid who's really great at physics, and over there, um, there's Tiger Woods, you know? And I, you don't feel as though your exceptionalness is um, different. It's not a difference, it's everybody's bringing something great, but then there's also like a cool like quirkiness to it where you don't feel like, the bragging or whatever. Everyone's just like, we're over here being awesome and everybody's welcome. Tara's incredibly hardworking. And so that's the first thing I learned is I never wanted to, as a coach, leave anything unturned, never do work, not finish the work to make sure that the team was prepared. And I've turned over every stone. I've watched every video I can. I've prepared the students in every way I possibly can for them to be successful because it's their opportunity. And I think Tara has never shorted herself or her team on putting in the work. And the other thing I learned about her as a coach, as a female coach, is that she has always done a great job of surrounding herself with a female staff. Heather and Kate are two of my best friends. I'm so happy for all the success that they have had at Stanford and the positive impact they have in a place that's so important to me. And so I really cheer for them to continue that success. It's weird when you're teammates with somebody is that whenever you get together, you go back to that time. So whenever we're together, unfortunately we all become 20 years old again, um, and you get that feeling, and they can never outgrow that, even though, you know, Kate's an associate head coach, and Red's an associate athletic director, and to me, they're just my teammates. And then Kate, you know, Kate's a coach, and she does a great job, and it's really great to have another friend, a close, close friend that's a coach. Um, we call each other or text each other all the time. I'll say, hey, how do you do, what's the time and the goal for full court shooting? And she'll say, hey, what's that zone that they were running? Um, hey, you know, we'll always have a constant dialogue about basketball. And beyond being friends, um, I feel like we're a resource for each other to um, excel as coaches. If I really think about it, my favorite thing at Stanford was practice. I loved going to Tar's practices. They were always so hard physically and mentally and just draining in every possible way, I, but I couldn't get enough of it. And they were three hours, like that's so long. But I loved it so much and I think if you love practice that much, there's no other job than being a coach because I'm a professional practice person. I get to go every day. The most basic fundamental things are the things that actually work. And I have this like book from Tara that she put in my notebook Stanford used these, you know, these notebooks for the season. I'm sure they still have them. And it was like, the principle is a player to player defense. I still use it. I read it every year. I put it in my player's notebook and it's the same, you know, the same rules apply. Well, I was never a good enough player to play for the national team. And so this is as, as close as you can get. It's the highest honor of my coaching career for sure to be associated with it and to be a part of that organization. And uh, I was a junior when Tara went to coach the Olympic team, and I got to go to the, I went and watched them win the gold medal in 96. And to be able to go put on that uniform, put on a shirt with the U.S. flag on your shoulder, to be able to represent our game, but also our country in that stage was amazing. Being a woman in coaching, uh, being a woman in sports is really uh, not always a comfortable place to be. Um, sports is going to be the last stand of masculinity. We already, I mean, that's established. Um, but I think, you know, with Tara as a role model, having that from a young age, seeing that and seeing how much of a positive effect. I can't imagine how different I'd be if Tara hadn't told me and taught me to show up every day with a great attitude and to give a great effort. Those are like burned into my skull. So I, I know those are the things she taught me. Those are the things that I tell my team every day. 
And the fact that a woman taught me that, here's the first time I ever saw a woman in a leadership position. Um, I take very seriously my role for the young women that I coach here and that they can see a woman not only in a leadership position but handling her business, doing what she, what she thinks is important and voicing concerns when they arise. And I think that all goes back to I think how Tara operates and how she taught me to operate and to not stand up for things that aren't fair and that women should be treated equally. And I hope I'm teaching those things to the girls that, um, that I coach and that I'm a continual resource in the same way that she is to me. Um, but there's still just a lot of work to be done.